Merry Christmas everybody! I can't believe it's only two more sleeps till Christmas day! Um, I am Claire, I am the creator of Wild Ginger Running a YouTube channel and tonight I'm doing a Q&A with questions from my very loyal, very supportive patrons. So thank you so much, really appreciate all your support patrons and I've got some great questions to answer from you guys today. So a um, couple of people have already written in um, comments here. So we've got Paul saying he's really looking forward to this one. So Merry Christmas to everybody. So that is fabulous. We've got Guy, he's saying me too, Merry Christmas everybody and Sebastian all the way from Germany says Merry Christmas to everybody and we've got Sue Hewitson says good evening and Merry Christmas so keep them coming in um, we've got Ridge Simpson here good evening from a lockdown Wales yeah I know we're gonna keep the tone nice and light and um, and fun tonight because um, Christmas is not the same this year as we all know but it's same for everybody so we just gotta pick up ourselves up and get on with it and hope fingers crossed for spring of 2021 but we'll keep it nice and light and we'll we'll answer lots of questions tonight we've got philip haddock as well saying merry christmas everyone so um so tonight is a q and a so um i'm going to be answering patrons questions so we've got um questions from loads of different people we've got uh uh, people want to know what the best thing that I've tested in 2020 is. Um, we've got people wanting to know how to stop themselves doing too much too soon after injury. We've got somebody training for a fast road half marathon as well as a 50 miler because of all the uh, changes that have happened this year. She's got these types of races um, coming together next year. Um, we've got a question about ultras for um, people who are over 18 rather than over 21. Um, then we're going to have a little bit of an interlude and we're going to celebrate um, one of the patrons doing a charity event um, in December. We're going to have a little bit of a bump update because people want to know how my pregnancy is going um, due on the 17th of January so I'll give you a little bit of a bump update. Um, and then we've got the second half where we've got somebody who's struggling to run 5k in one go so a few tips about that we've got some queries about ice spikes you like to grip into icy ground this winter we've got a question about gels on ultra um, and like how you stop your stomach from turning uh, while using them and then finally we've got a question about using running poles so I've got a pair of Harriet running poles here um, ready to show you a little demonstration of those so just going to read out a couple more hellos and we'll get stuck in to the first question after a Christmas message from a, one of my most loyal patrons. So I will read that out to you before we start. Okay, so who else have we got watching here? We've got Matt H, he says hi. Uh, we've got Spare Tire Running, he says, or she says, Merry Christmas from Detroit, USA. Fantastic that we've got people overseas. Uh, Paul says, loving the tinsel. Yes, well, I decided to come as an angel tonight, an angel of joy and celebration. Um, wherever you are in the world, uh, let's have a good time tonight and uh, answer some good questions. So we've got John Gardner watching from the USA as well. Hello, John, I've got a couple of questions from you. Um, Alex is here as well. Hey, Alex, nice to see you. Uh, we've got Dan Runs as well. Hello, and Lisa Gurry from Southeast Ireland. Island. Wonderful. We've got a real, uh, real mixed bag of all over the world tonight. So absolutely fantastic to see you all. So first, we've just got a little Christmas message from Guy, who's one of my most loyal patrons. I just want to read this out because I think Guy sums it up really nicely. Um, he says uh, he just wants to say um, what a great year it has been. So <laughs> unusual for some people. Um, Guy thinks it's been a great year and he's um, really enjoyed being part of our Ginger Running YouTube channel. Um, he's really enjoyed all the guests that we've had on. So we usually have a guest on a Wednesday night and this is just like a Christmas Q&A, so it's a little bit different. Um, and he says it's been great to see everybody um, smashing their runs in beautiful places. Um, it's been a great escape from all the bad stuff that's gone on this year so thank you for sharing all your stories everybody um and um also guy completed his first 50k this year if you are a patron you can see that it's an exclusive film um for patrons only so if you go to the patron website um you can get access to those exclusive films and um, there's loads of discounts on there as well and um details about our next meetup which uh <laughs> 
I don't know when it is now, um, but stuff like that is on that page. So use your uh, patron email address to get into there to see Kai's first 50k. It's a fantastic film. It was really fun. Um, Nigel and I helped um, Guy complete that. So that was a really fun day. Uh, like it was just like a, like one lockdown ended before the other one started. So we were really lucky to get that done. Um, so he, Guy couldn't have done it without us. So that's really cool. And um, he hopes everybody has a great Christmas and that New Year is better for everyone. So I just think that's a really nice summary from Guy. Be really positive and looking towards the future as well. Um, so yeah, John says, well said Guy. Um, Hannah has just made it as well. Um, she says, has anybody else got a stinking cold for Christmas? Um, I haven't, <laughs> but strangely, I have this really weird ear popping thing that keeps happening to me during this pregnancy. Um, and I just, my ears keep popping and then you just, all you can hear is like the rush of your own breathing and your own heartbeat and it sounds like your nose is bunged up. Um, so some of the videos that I filmed over the past couple of months have sounded like I've got a cold, but I haven't had a cold for months. So it's really weird. Um, Catherine Roberts is here, she says hey to everyone. And Monique Copperjans is here as well. We'll have a question from her later on in the programme. Okay, so let us start with the first question, which is from Phil Haddock. Let's find this question here. Phil wants to know what is the best thing that I've tested in 2020? So I was just thinking about this and it's a really, really difficult question actually, because I've tested so many really cool things. Um, and and also I'm, I've just realized I I should have really got something to hold up. I, I can just see something there that's one of my favorite things. So um, one, of my, one of my favorite things was, uh, oh yeah, I can show you this actually. I'm not sure if I'm allowed, but I will show you this. Um, one of my favourite things was back in February, just before lockdown, we actually, um, we did some market research, like, between the patrons, um, and we came up with, uh, some sort of features and recommendations for these new socks that Bridgedale are bringing out in 2021, so they're coming out kind of like March, April kind of time, and, um, we as a group actually helped Bridgedale to design these socks, and then, um, I did a photo shoot for them, um, and this is, uh, the pictures on the front are part of this photo shoot that I did. Um, so that was really interesting because um, Bridgetown had just done walking socks and multi-sport socks in the past so it was really nice to be involved with that and it was really nice to see how they go about doing it and how they were in so interested in what trail runners really wanted socks so that was a really cool thing and then the other thing that was really cool was I've been wearing this a lot so it's just in my pile of stuff that I just took off from a run um, these Harrier running packs so uh, let me just move this out of the way so you can see properly. So the um, Kate McKenzie, who is the owner um, and creator of Harrier, um, she came to me um, this time last year, I think it was, or it might have even been the year before. Um, and we went through like literally every backpack that I had ever tested and we picked out all the great features that we really liked on them and then we put them into the Harrier backpacks. So um, she's got two packs, the Kerber 5 and the Kinder 10. This is the Kerber 5 litre one and they're just really, really good. And the most amazing thing about them is because Kate is just a solo company on her own, she doesn't have a shop or anything, these packs are really, really cheap compared to most other ones. So they, and but they're really good quality still. So um, they're, this one, the five litre one is 54 pounds and then the 10 litre one's like 59 pounds. So it's an incredibly good value and you can get all bundles. And we talked about like what we put in them and what we put in a first aid kit and helped with the poles as well. And I'll show you the pole in a minute. At the end, we've got a pole question as well. So they're the socks and this backpack are I think my favorite things I've tested coming very close second but they didn't let me keep it so I can't show it to you um is uh, I've got a new one though um but it's the batteries died ironically so Coros um brought out a, a watch called the Apex and they let me test it this is the Pace 2 and I am currently testing this hope to get that out in the new year kind of sometime um and the Coros watches um, have a really, really long battery life. So that was really exciting as well. They made me send back the Apex. Mm, that's annoying. <laughs> but this is the Pace 2 and they forgot to send me a battery charger with it. So I am just waiting for the battery charger so I can carry on testing this one. Um, I'm testing this Garmin one right now. It's the, Fe um, not the Fenix. I did that the other day. Um, this is the 
Forerunner 245 Music. So yeah, got to get my head around lots of different watches at the moment. Um, so yeah, Karos and their huge battery life was another one for me. And then finally with the gear, um, I'm just really pleased that that the um, I've started doing an eco and ethical evaluation to each gear company at the end of the uh, of the end of each review. I've been really pleased with how that's been received because I really do think that considering the eco friendliness and the ethics of a company should be what we're looking for in all of our when we look for gear. I think we should take it into consideration, um, and I'm really pleased with Innovate in particular because they do so much for the outdoors and and they're doing loads for diversity as well and they've won loads of my gear tests and I just think they're they're really a shining light like they're a really good example for eco-friendly friendliness um, in the outdoor world. Montaigne are really good as well and Rab as well like a lot of the big British brands are really really good but it's in particular Innovate I mean for example instead of Black Friday they did Green Friday and they ended up donating a certain percentage of every sale to Cumbria Wildlife Trust and they donated nearly £10,000 in the end so they're going to plant loads of trees with that and fix some footpaths so it's just really nice what they're doing um, and their gear is really good too <laughs> so let's just see what everybody's been saying about this um, uh, oh, we've got some more people joining. So we've got Abby Norman. Hello, Abby. Merry Christmas to you. Uh, Nigel's here as well. Her Merry Christmas to you, Nigel. Um, Catherine Roberts likes that question. Um, Kieran has a question here. I'll answer you if, if we've got time. Um, uh, and any thoughts on a good chest heart rate monitor? Oh, I hate chest heart rate monitors. They interfere with your bra if you're a woman. So I don't really like them. But uh, Sunto do a good one. Garmin do a good one. Um, so I hope that helps you. Um, Abby was involved with the testing of the Bridgedale socks. So she really likes them. I think Kat was involved too. Um, uh, Dan runs as using Harrier bottles. And he's going to use a vest maybe next year. Um, what way does the soft side of the chest strap face in or out? Um, so on a chest strap you get like uh, two little uh, bits. Um, I don't know if I've got one just like randomly around here somewhere. Let me just see. Oh, <laughs> yes, I've got one randomly just here. Okay, so this is a chest strap. Um, so usually there's like a, some kind of thing on Sunto they're round um, but yeah the, this is a chest strap and then this is the side that you put against your body so you have to sort of wet these bits here the left and right little strap like that so you put that bit against your body and you slightly dampen them um, so there that's that's a Garmin one and a Sunto one um, looks a bit different but it's basically the same hope that helps <laughs> um and uh john says polar makes a good chest heart rate monitor um and philip is getting a harrier backpack for christmas as well seb likes his apex watch as well and um guy has noticed innovate over the past year doing more for the environment so yes yeah so those are the brands that i have really enjoyed testing in 2020 so thanks to all those brands and, and big up to those ones who are doing more for the environment i think it's, it's definitely the done thing these days Okay, so now we have a very interesting question from Ben who would like to know about how to stop himself doing too much too soon because he got injured. Um, so he he's coming back from a calf strain but he's getting too enthusiastic and he wants to run too much. So how do you stop yourself from doing too much too soon? So if anybody's got any kind of advice for Ben on the live chat right now, then do type it in and I will read it out in a moment. Um, but I've got a few tips for you, Ben, to start with. Um, so first of all, I think um, one of my tips would be to start doing some cross training because if it's a calf strain there's certain things that you can you can really easily do that aren't going to hurt that like you could go swimming you could do um, a strength and conditioning workout you could um ones that's like low impact not jumping around type ones um and you could also try a bit of cycling as well you could also do some walking i know that's really <laughs> it's difficult for runners to walk but you could try doing all those different things instead of running um, because it is important that you do take that time to come back slowly from that injury um, 
and and those things like the cycling will get you outdoors and the swimming will give you another thing to to work on if you can't swim maybe book some lessons or something or have a try or get a friend to teach you um and that is one way to stop yourself doing too much running the other thing that you could do is Google a lot of injury videos on YouTube and just remind yourself how important it is to to not go too fast too soon and too much too soon um, because it is really easy just to pick up your trainers and, and go um, if you're really, really enthusiastic. So I would Google some injury videos. There's a really good one from Ian Sharman, who's a coach in America. He's British, but he coaches in America. And so if you put Wild Ginger Running Ian Sharman, I'll try and find it and put a link in the film description below as well, then he's got a really good um, loads of tips about um, how to come back from injury and how to deal with it psychologically as well. So... Uh, so that is Ben's question um, and if anybody else has any uh, um, uh, advice for Ben then that would be good so Paul also says um, try to be disciplined as well so yeah <laughs> so you sound like you're you know that you're over enthusiastic um, so try to not 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 be enthusiastic but you you know that it's going to take some time so you've got to be disciplined and not get out too quickly maybe make yourself a little bit of a training plan so that you do up it gradually and really stick to that so that you don't find yourself oh I'll just go for a 20 mile run definitely do some some shorter runs and just build it up really really slowly um Hannah's got a tip as well um she said having got injured la a lot last year her top tip is lots of very easy, lower heart rate level running. So, and easing very carefully into any speed stuff. So that's a really good shout actually. So don't like um, take away those speed sessions for a bit and just do a lot of very easy, slow and steady running as well. There's also a really great book you can get. Um, it's called uh, Running Free of Injuries and it's on my bookshelf somewhere, but I can't see it just now. Yes, I can see it. I shall find it for you. Um, ugh, this is a really good book by Paul Hobra. Really recommend that you get this because he covers the calf in great detail. Um, there's loads of really cool exercises that you can do as prehab as well. And basically what he is, he goes through like a three point plan of what you can do yourself to, um, to relieve these injuries. So um, you can read it all and he tells you like a time frame to get back into um, running again and, and how far you should go and what you should be looking for um, so that you don't just immediately get that injury back again. So really recommend that book. I'll put a link to it in the film description below as well. Um, I'll just write a note to myself to actually remember to do that. Uh, Paul Hobra running free of injuries. Okay. I'll put a link to that in the description below or in the podcast show notes. I do do a podcast of this. Um, so if you prefer to listen to this kind of thing as a podcast, then just Google Wild Ginger Running in your usual podcast provider and you will be far, you will find them. Um, so um, Catherine says uh, you should try to set ambitious goals that you that will make you stick to a plan like hitting a certain pace this will make you have a rest day in advance to be fresh as well um, Seb says uh, it's easier to be disciplined in doing lots of training um, than is just <laughs> than just doing what's good for you <laughs> Um, Kat says yes to slow runs too. Um, Guy says more off-road, running more off-road, it's easier on the calf and the joint. That's a really good point as well. I just assumed that you were a trail runner. So yes, if you're a road runner, if you do any road running, Ben, get onto the trails. That's really good. Um, Rich Simpson says um, very good book, um, the Running Free of Injuries book. So yeah, nice to know other people are, um, are using that book. It's a really good one. Um... A uh, guy says he loves that book as well. And Philip says he needs to get the book. Yes, well, I'll definitely put an, uh, a link in below as well. Fantastic. Okay, so I think that's, I hope that's given you some advice, good advice there, Ben. Um, and now we're going to move on to a very interesting question from Kat, who I believe is watching right now. So thank you for your question, Kat. 
Um, she is saying she has a lot of rescheduled races next year um, because of this year, obviously. Um, so she's doing a couple of trail marathons, a 50 miler and a couple of tarmac half marathons, um, which she wants to do in like uh, one hour 50. So she's looking for some advice on training for both. Um, so, so she's kind of got like both ends of the scale here. So a fast half marathon on the road and then the 50 miles is in hilly trails in the Mendip Hills. <laughs> so it's quite, it's quite different. It does depend how far they are apart from each other cat. So, uh, but I would say you can, you can train for both at the same time. Um, but you shouldn't expect to sort of peak at both at the same time. So um, depending on where they are in the year. It would be great if all your half marathons were like at the start of the year and then you had the 50 later in the year. So if that's the case, then that's brilliant. If they're sort of dotted about in between, you're gonna have to pick one that you wanna focus on. And it sounds like you wanna do a focus on the road halves because you've got that time there, whereas you're just okay to complete the 50. So for those fast halves, I would concentrate on on the training plan for the fast half marathon. So I would go online and I would find a sort of, maybe like a sort of intermediate to advanced training plan for a half marathon. So for example, um, you're probably gonna be running four times a week, probably, um, you know, up to an hour a couple of times, then you've probably got one or maybe even two speed sessions, depending on what the body can handle. Um, so you've probably you've probably got some like track work in there, maybe if it's a road marathon, depending on how hilly it is. So you've probably got like 100 meter sprints, like 400 meter sprints, 800 meter sprints, that kind of thing to build you up. And then you've probably got the long run. So the long run, when I was training for my fast half marathon, road marathon time, um, what I did was I, I did quite a bit of running at that faster pace. So if you want like one hour 50, I'm not sure what that is in minute milings, like around like under nine minute miling, is it like eight and a half minute miling all the way around, something like that. So you wanna have um, segments of your long run where you practice going at that pace, at that marathon pace. So say you've started with a seven mile run, you wanna put an insert in there a couple of times, like a couple of kind of five minute blasts of going at that 8.30 pace within your long run. So you're not just trotting out the long run like you would be training for an ultra. Training for an ultra, you just kind of trot out your long runs like chatting pace, la da 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 da. But for this fast half marathon, you wanna be putting those inserts into your um, into your long run. So um, however far you go up to with your long run for that half marathon, I mean, for me, I'd go all the way up to 13 miles, but you could just do up to 10 miles for the half there. Um, and by the time you get to 10, you'd probably wanna be putting like three or so inserts of eight 30 minute miling in there. Um, the reason that you wouldn't just go and try and do 10 miles at 8.30s all the way around, or every weekend is because of your chance of injury. So if you build it up slowly like that and you're doing the other runs during the week as well, then um, you stand a really good chance of doing that without getting um, injured. Yeah, so 8.15 pace, yeah, so that's the goal half pace. Yeah, so you wanna be doing plenty of running at that 8.15 pace cap. And I would say that with those other, mar the, the other longer runs that you've got, I think you could also do, um, oh, let's, um, uh, yeah, so let's just see here. She'd like to do the halves in April and September and just finish the 50s. Okay, yeah, so that's fine. So I would train yourself for those halves. So get all that training advice. There's Paula Radcliffe does a really good book, actually. It, it's called, um, I think it's called Running, How to Run by Paula Radcliffe. And there are plans in there, which would be fantastic to follow there's also loads of half marathon training plans just randomly on the internet so get yourself like an intermediate one or something like that to get you to that one hour 50 and then i would just when you're in one of the harder training weeks perhaps or maybe not maybe in one of the easier training weeks you could just do like a longer run just for fun so you could or hiking actually if you've got that 50 mile coming up so a couple of times kind of a month two months before the 50 milers go and do like a long day hiking in the hills 
or do well and really <laughs> like a one weekend do a really long hike like a day hike like with a big backpack and like lots of hills and then another day um do like a four hour run just dead slow like probably you could get maybe even 20 miles within that four hours depending on how hilly it is but something like that just to kind of keep your endurance ticking over whilst you're training your speed as well um, so I think that will do it. So let us know how it goes, Kat, because that sounds like a really exciting 2021 for you. Um, it sounds really good. So yeah, um, or you'll get a coach. There's that as well. So Jen and Marcus Scottney, who are going to be taking over my live broadcasts on my maternity leave January, February, March. They are great coaches. You could enlist one of them. You could get a training plan from Dave Taylor. He's a fell running guide. Um, and Or you could go for Damien Hall. He's a really good ultra coach as well. So any of those guys would be really good. Um, there's Jude Palmer as well from Run Surrey Hills and Rachel Sheldrake, I think it is. She's... Um, uh, I I can't remember what the company's called. It's something like M Muddy Running or something like that. Um, so yeah, so there's loads of coaches around. So it might be good if you want a personalized training plan to, to go for one of those, um, those people who are coaching people all the time. Okay, so Kat says, thank you. I will let you know what happens. Yes, very keen. Take loads of photos, Kat, and post them in the Patreon group. We would be really keen to know your progress there. Right, okay, so we've got one more question, and then we're gonna have an interlude. Um, so we have a question here from Becky, and this was actually a question when we did the Patreon meetup, well, the virtual Zoom uh, Patreon meetup. So Becky, um, she is amazing, she is 19 years old, um, she's living in Edinburgh, and she is getting into ultra running. And she's noticed that a lot of ultras say that you have to be over 21 to do them. And she's 19 years old and, and she feels like, you know, she wants to progress and she wants to do these ultras. So she wanted to know what ultra she could do um, aged 18, um, that were 18 plus, sorry. So um, I asked Twitter earlier today and I am going to check what people on Twitter have said. <laughs> it's so useful, the hive mind isn't it i'm just gonna check what everyone said okay so i put hey hive mind does anyone know of any ultras where you don't have to be over 21 asking for a friend um so we've got nick oxley has said the spire ultra is 18 plus nice and friendly setup and that's organized by first light active i don't know where that is though sorry becky <laughs> um then vicky um also known as Vicky Does Stuff on Twitter, says um, race to the tower, etc. You know, like all those threshold runs, they're kind of down in the south, so um, Becky's in Edinburgh, uh, but you could make a special trip. Um, they are 18 plus as well, not over 21, so that's good. Um, Joe Faulkner, he runs races in the Lake District. Um, uh, he has a company called Nav4 Adventure. And he says all of the NAV4 adventure events can be done at 18 plus and the Daffy Do is also family friendly. So check out NAV4 adventure, Becky. Um, they can be done at 18 plus. And then the last one from Paul Sumner, who is Dr. Paul WS on Twitter. He said the Bullock Smithy hike is 18 plus and it allows unaccompanied under, no, it allows accompanied under 18s by arrangement. Oh, and coincidentally, it is awesome. <laughs> so I, I'm really sorry. I, I didn't think to go, think where these races are, but that's at least four races that you can do, Becky. So um, once races have started again, <laughs> then you can go and do those four races as a um, plus 18 rather than a plus 21. So there we go. And if anybody else knows of any races that Becky can do um, at the tender age of 19, then do comment, either in the live chat or maybe in the YouTube comments below. Um, that would be really handy to uh, let Becky know about those races. Um, oh, Catherine says, Cat Roberts says, uh, race to the castle is somewhere near Durham, so not too bad for Scotland. Yeah. Um, and Kay... GKD says, is there an expla explanation for the 21 limit? Maybe rules borrowed from US events, including alcohol. I, I don't think it's an alcohol thing because in the UK, you're allowed to drink from like age 16. <laughs> it's not like a, as much of a big deal. Oh, are you allowed to drink from the age of 16? No, it's 18, isn't it? 
oops, I've just, <laughs> my parents are bad. Um, no, we were allowed to drink wine since we were like really little because they didn't want us to have some kind of alcohol problem. Um, so uh, yeah, I think the explanation is probably more due to just experience in on the trails and like with the weather conditions and things like that. Um, the arm, actually, if you, um, you can bring um, a youngster, like a 16 year old, to do something like the arm, the original mountain marathon, because people do it in pairs, so you often get like father-son pairs, mother-daughter, mother-son, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I think the 21 limit is just for experience, and also because there is some body of research that does say that ultra running is more for older people, like when you've stopped growing and some some people think that maybe you might not have stopped growing until you're about 25 maybe even. So um, yeah, so there's a little bit of safety involved with that as well. But I'm sure, you know, if you're doing a 30 miler, it's not really, you know, it's not 100 miles, is it? So yeah, I think it's about the, um, the physical um, not wanting to get people to burn out, youngsters to burn out too early is what I would imagine. Um, so we're going to have an interlude now. I th we're halfway through the programme and I want to do a, a special shout out to a special patron who has raised some money for charity in December. So we have Paul Hamilton, who I think is watching just now. Well done, Paul. Um, what he did was he he was part of the one run global the one run global run I think it's called that Danny Bent was talking to us about on a previous live broadcast, and he um, he was getting somebody in every country all over the world to run. So Paul decided to join in, um, and he raised two hundred and sixty five pounds just on one run for charity and he chased Christmas trees. So I've got a lovely picture of Paul here who who was chasing the Christmas trees. There he is, uh, um, looking very suave in his luminous jacket around various Christmas trees where he lives. So he did a run to all the different Christmas trees um, and uh, took photos along the way. So fantastic, Paul. Well done for raising £265 for charity. He doesn't say which one. So if you're listening, Paul, then do fill us in either on the, the comments below or the... Um, or the live chat. Yay, well done Paul. Um, so yes, people saying well done Paul on the live chat. Uh, awesome. That is great. So then we have a question from John um, in the interlude, still part of the interlude. Um, so John would like an update on how me and the bump are getting on. So if anybody's new to the channel, I am due to give birth to a my first baby um, in January, the 17th of January. Um, so I've, I've been running, uh, here's a picture of me running with the bump. So that's, that's what I looked like a couple of weeks ago. In the background that's Burley House, which is just near where I live in Stamford. Um, and I'll just make it a bit smaller so I can see you as well. So that's what I looked like a couple of weeks ago. I look pretty much the same but a bit bigger now. Um, I have actually this week uh, stopped running. I had a, like a really a really painful run on Thursday and I just thought, do you know what, I'm really kidding myself now. I can't run anymore. Throughout like most of the pregnancy, running has been really uncomfortable. I think it's just because I'm uh, stubborn that I've carried on. If I didn't obviously run a running channel, I probably wouldn't have carried on even through trimester two. Um, but I carried on because I'm in a running club and I'm a running leader. So I just, I went down to the slowest group that run the shortest distance. So I was running 5K with them. Um, just three miles and we do two stops as well so that was that was nice um the main thing was I really just needed the loo all the time and it was really uncomfortable so I've stopped running and I've done uh, I do walking I do swimming I do yoga and I went out on my bike on the weekend which was so nice because it was so it was just gliding I was a bit worried about like my knees were coming up and I, I like was hitting the bump and I was thinking oh god I hope I'm not like nudging the baby in the head every every time my knee comes up but um I saw the midwife on Tuesday and she said the baby's head is still down and it's beginning to become engaged so that means that it's like getting ready to come out so yeah 
I will have a child in January, so it's very exciting. And what is really exciting is that me and Steve are doing a mural for the baby's bedroom. So I'm just gonna give you a little bit of behind the scenes uh, of this mural. So we painted the mountains. Um, prizes for anybody who can see a specific mountain in the USA, where me and Steve went a couple of years ago. Um, uh, there's a, it's quite a distinctive mountain in the, in the background in the middle so if you can guess what that mountain is then let me know it's in America and it's in one of my favourite national parks so that is the mural that we have made so far in the baby's room then because Steve is an illustrator by trade he then decided to take a photo of it and put it on his computer and turn it into uh, put some more bits and bobs on it so this just means that we don't have to put the bits and bobs on on the wall and then go, oh no, that's not right, let's change it. So this is now what we're planning to do on the wall. So we're just cutting out some stencils now. And we've got some glow in the dark paint for the stars. And this is what we're gonna put in the baby's room because we're gonna be spending a lot of time in there and we want it to be really peaceful as well. So that is the yeah and somebody's guessed the mountain so john gardner has very good eyes he's also from america <laughs> so he probably knows this more than most so that is half dome there in the background so i'm just really pleased with that because i just there's a sofa where that photo is taken from and you can just sit there and you can imagine yourself running through those mountains and i just think that will be really lovely um at three o'clock in the morning when we've got a wailing beast of a baby <laughs> So lots of people saying the mural looks great. So that is really cool. Um, uh, and Paul thinks it might be the Pikes Peak. Yeah, maybe Pikes Peak can be in there too. I'm not sure of the shape of the mountain, but the half dome is the very distinctive one right in the middle at the back there. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and Rich Simpson said also um, that there will probably be some baby trainers as well. Um, it will be born with trainers on. What trainers would I prefer him or her to have on? I think I'm gonna go for Innovate just because of their eco credentials and um, the fact that they make really good shoes for every occasion. Uh, and then John has said, Steve is a brilliant artist. Yes, do you know what? He designed the Wild Ginger Running logo. So um, yeah, he's very, very useful husband. <laughs> well done me. <laughs> cool. Okay. So that concludes the interlude and now on with the questions. So we have got, um, we have got a question from a beginner um, trail runner called Monique. Uh, she is one of my patrons. So thank you very much, Monique. It is wonderful to have you on board. So she says, uh, she has this problem. She's 57. She started running three years ago, but she's not going forwards. She feels like she's going backwards. What is she doing wrong? She's trained with walking and then running, but she can't run five kilometers all in one go. So if anybody else has got some advice for Monique uh, based on their experience or friends experiences, then definitely type it in the live chat now or get um, answering in the YouTube comments below because we all want to help Monique out here. Um, I've got a few tips for you, Monique. So here we go. Um, when I first started running, um, this is like, oh God, like 15 years ago. Uh, well, running, you know, like not at school where you're forced to kind of running. Um, I I had to make myself slow down. So I, I you don't give any more detail about the situation, but it could be that you're trying to run this 5K too fast. Um, because otherwise, why would you need to stop? So um, I would say slow down so much to the point where you can breathe through your nose. That's how I slowed myself down enough so that I could start running for longer. And when I first started running, like I think I was like 21 or 22, I was trying to do a half marathon on roads, as you do. And I remember... 20 minutes of running being a massive achievement for me and I remember half an hour of running in one go being a massive achievement for me and now well not right now obviously but now I can run like for 10 hours you know like it can be done so it does take a while so I would slow yourself down um 
so that you're not walking but you're just jogging rather than running and I would breathe through my nose and I would uh, just completely slow it down so that you can just keep going and if you're finding you get to like the the middle and you feel like stopping just do everything in your power to not stop running so slow down even more if you can and just keep that bounce going and keep just jogging along um i would also recommend watching some of the stuff on my channel from shane benzie um on technique as well because it could be that you're maybe holding yourself back um by kind of i don't know leaning over too much or um not with good posture so you want to be nice and upright like as if someone's pulling a sort of a, th a thread through your head you want to be um, nice and upright so that your lungs can expand fully and that your legs can work fully as well so do check out those films from Shane Benzie I'll list them below actually as well let me just make a note to write the Shane Benzie films Shane Benzie films I'll put them in the YouTube description below but if you google um, while ginger running Shane Benzi, then all of his really good technique work shall come up. Um, let's just see if anybody has um, uh, any other ideas for Monique here. Um, oh, Craig's got a question. Um, okay, so yeah, so no other advice um, at the moment for Monique, but maybe there will be in the YouTube comments as well. Um, the other reason that you might not have enough energy maybe for the 5k is have you considered like uh, how hydrated you are and if you've got any fuel in your body as well so just making sure that you're eating a, a nice balanced diet keeping hydrated as you go make sure you're not too hot as well a lot of beginners runners start out with lots of clothing on and then they feel like um, they feel like they're sort of um, going to sort of uh, get too hot and you just have to um, definitely make sure that you don't get too hot while you're running so start off be bold and start cold I would say so that is Look, my okay. advice to you um, Monique on um, uh, yeah on um, on running for 5k so I hope that's helped you out and I hope that you can run 5k and do keep us posted as well because um, yeah this that would be really good if we could just all keep up with your progress as well sorry i just have to delete somebody who's writing some really strange messages so <laughs> i just uh just deleted him from yeah there we go um uh, kat's got a, a suggestion as well um she said if you've been running for three years it could be in your head as much as it is in your legs um, what about if you try a one kilometer walk at the start of each kilometer, gradually reduce it to 15 seconds and then eliminate them one at a time. So that's really good as well. It's a bit like the Couch to 5K app. If you've got that over there where you live, Monique, the Couch to 5K app is really good in um, just reducing um, the, the amount of walking you do compared to running so that eventually you can walk for 5K. Yeah, so guys said for Couch to 5K app as well. Um, yeah, she she does mention that she has started with walking and running, but you just gradually need to reduce and reduce the walking and then just jog and, and don't try to go too fast. That's the, the main thing that beginner runners do in my experience is they, they think it's all about the speed. And it's not about the speed. It's about just doing it and doing it more frequently as well. Okay, so Monique says, thank you, I will let you know, fantastic. So yes, keep us posted, Monique. Um, we really wanna know how you get on. Okay, so next question is a good winter question from John, uh, John G, I think, yes, John Gardner, here we go. John Gardner was my first ever patron, by the way. So just a little fun fact for you there. Thank you, John, for being so loyal and supportive over many, many years. Well, three years. <laughs> um, so John is curious if I have any suggestions for footwear accessories to prevent slips and falls on hard packed snow or ice. So he's he's seen various things like with metal spikes on that can go over the screw the shoes and he's screwed um, a dozen machine screws into the lugs of some old running shoes and that seems to help. Have I personally used any of this type of thing? 
Yes, I have. I've used both actually, John, and I've screen grabbed a few pictures of some of the stuff that I've used in the past so that anybody else um, can have a look at, at these options. So you can screw some actual screws. They do sell like ice spikes that you can screw into your actual shoe. Um, the disadvantage of that is that once you've screwed them in, you've kind of got a shoe which is spiky. So you don't have the option to kind of take them off mid trail. Um, if you get to a patch where there isn't any ice and snow and you don't need them anymore. And they can be a bit heavy and clacky, especially if you get to a hard section or rocks. So, um, so that is, um, so that is what I think I don't think they're as versatile they're great if you know that you're always going to be running in the snow so you know, like places like Sweden um places in America that properly ice over for ages that's great but in the UK usually you're running up through kind of muddy stuff and then you'll get to this icy layer so it's less useful in the UK for that kind of footwear where it just stays in you can get like um there's a very, the iceberg um iceberg brand from Sweden they do a shoe with like integrated like ice spikes in them like they don't come out innovate do they used to do the o-rock which was an orienteering shoe which had spikes in it as well so they're they're just less versatile and so for the uk especially it's not as good because you usually mud to ice to then mud again so i think you want some stuff to put over and there's several different types which i'm going to show you here so we've got these are for like if you've got quite minimal um icy snowy conditions so these ones oh this way these are the yak track Yaks track, no, Yak tracks walker. So you pop these on and they're really good for like round streets and towns and like tra urban trails and that kind of thing. They just give you a little bit more grip in the ice and the snow. So they're a really good option. They're quite cheap. They're like um, 18 or so pounds. You could probably get them on eBay for less as well. Um, so they're good. They're nice and light. They're just rubber things that go over the shoe. I've got a picture of them here as well. So they're just, they look like that. They're nice and light and you can just easily fold them up and put them in the pack. The advantage of those, I'll just get them up again, is that they're basically a bit of wire coiled around a bit of rubber. So the advantage is they're not spiky. So if you fold them up and put them in your pack, you're not going to get spiked by them and it's not going to damage the material of your pack. So that is the advantage of those. But they're not quite as diggy inny, <laughs> for want of a better word, than something more like this one, which is the uh, run ice traction. So this is like the next step up, I would say. So this is a picture of a shoe with the same kind of rubber thing that wraps around the shoe. And it's um, got actual metal dots, like metal spikes at the front of the midfoot. And then at the back, it's got the wire wound around the bits of rubber. So um, that's good as well. It's not, it, again, in the pack, it's not it's not too spiky, it's not going to rip the material, that kind of thing. Um, and that will dig in a bit more than just the, um, the, just the uh, coils of, um, uh, coils of metal. <laughs> um, it's hard to explain. <laughs> um, so they dig in a bit more. Uh, but then if you need even more, uh, you go on basically to full on like crampon type things. Oh, wait a bit. Oh, oh this is a, no, I'll talk about this one first, actually. This is the Nortec Corsa Micro Crampon. Um, that's a rubber thing as well, and it's just got studs in it. So it's got these metal studs. They're not actually spikes, but they're studs. So that's like the next thing up, and they're at the midfoot, and they're at the heel as well. I'll put links to all of these in the um, YouTube description as well, in case you want to buy any of them. Um, then, basically, you go all the way up to an actual spiky crampon. So these are like a flexible version of hiking crampons and mountaineering crampons that you get for hiking up really mountainous mountains, like really snowy stuff. So these just slip on and it's like having a cat's claw on your foot. So you can, oh, it's amazing. You go from being Bambi on ice, basically, to really, really grippy on ice and hard packed snow. So they are the Gravel Run Light Anti-Slip crampons, presumably. <laughs> um, so yeah, 
Um, so those are all the brands that I know about, like Hill Sound also do a pair of running crampons, um, Catula do a pair of micro spikes as well, so there's there's loads out there. Um, the disadvantage of the really spiky ones is that you do have to be a bit careful putting them on and off, like not to rip a glove or not to... Um, not to like you have to make sure that they're kind of uh, folded in on themselves and in their little bags so that they, they don't poke your backpack because backpack material is quite lightweight and thin isn't it so it can easily like be stabbed or ripped with your crampons the other thing to um to realize as well is if you're also wearing some running leggings or running um waterproof trousers they can catch on them so um you if you've got a pair of waterproof trousers like these like these on ones here these arm waterproof trousers they actually have a panel on the inner calf here which is stronger this is a, a really strong material compared to this stretchy waterproof material here so they are really ideal for winter running where you're going to be wearing some spiky stuff on your feet um sometimes it's even in britain sometimes it's warm enough to wear um a pair of these with like i don't know three-quarter leggings or shorts even um, so you want to make sure that you're wearing um, socks which are a little bit higher than your ankle, like socks that sort of come up to sort of here um, because you can easily clip an ankle with the spikes and that really does hurt as well. Like, believe me, I've had experience. So yeah, just a few things to consider there. And um, and when to put them on um, is just slightly before you need them as well. So if it looks like you're like it's getting all snowy and icy, then put them on earlier rather than later, and put them on in a sheltered place rather than on top of the mountain with the wind all blowing. So even if you have to backtrack a few like yards, then just uh, do it just to keep out the wind. Um, and then there was one more thing as well. Uh... Oh yes, uh, so if you're running in snow, like that's crunching underneath your feet nicely, that's fine, you don't really need to wear them on that. When you need to wear them is when it's icy and when the snow is like so hard that it's actually icy on top. So that's when you need to wear these. If you're sinking into the snow and getting good grip from the snow and good traction, then you don't really need to wear them. So that's just another point as well. Um, cool. Oh, John's, John's watching right now and he's saying, thank you. The Yak tracks, uh, the Yak tracks traction cleats with coils at the back and short studs in the front underfoot is exactly what he needs. Awesome. Great. Well, I will put some links to that in the YouTube description below, John. So if you want to, um, uh, get them, then, uh, there will be a link for you there. Yeah, I know, we want some snow, don't we? <laughs> um, Innovate said the mud claw, um, Innovate said, Philip says that the Innovate mud claw would be good. Yes, you're totally right, Philip. So the mud claw has such big aggressive studs that in snow, it's absolutely fantastic. The, it just, you need to put one of them spiky things on when you go in the ice, you know, that's too hard for those studs to get through when you're kind of slipping around. When you start to slip, that's when you need them. When you become Bambi, you you need the ice spikes that's basically it I did do a film about it I'll link to that in the description below as well I did a film about when to wear them um, yeah and in and guy has said that innovate do do that shoe with spikes it's called the Arctic claw yes yeah and it and he says it's still good on other surfaces as well yeah yeah it's just yeah it can be a bit heavier um, so if you don't need it, then it's good not to wear a spike thing. It's good to just have those other things in your pack, but they can be a bit, they can be a bit heavy too. So yeah, it's just w knowing where you're going to run and what the, um, what the terrain's going to be like, what the weather's going to be like. Um, um, Alex says, what about a pair of lightweight cross country racing shoes with their screw in spikes? You could yes that would work um they are quite they're quite they're, they are quite lightweight and quite thin fabric so you might get a bit of a cold foot but if you paired it up with a waterproof sock then why not sounds like a great idea you should try it alex and tell us how it goes <laughs> great awesome okay fantastic <laughs> and guy says no snow for me thanks <laughs> Snow, thank you. <laughs> okay, we've got two more questions before the end of the show. Um, so we've got Matt who wants to know about gels on ultras. Where is Matt's question? I shall put it up. Here we go, Matt. 
So uh, he is a, a newbie and he wants to ramp up his running and he wants to run 50k ultra in late summer. So that's about 30 miles basically. And he wants to know about using gels. Like when do you use run uh, gels prior to the run or during the run? He's got some SIS isotonic gels, but he's not using them yet because he's only running like nine to ten miles, um, and he feels like he doesn't really need them. But now he wants to ramp that distance up. He needs to fuel himself. So he says he understands it's a lot of trial and error, which it definitely is. Um, but he doesn't want to go crazy with the gels as he's heard some horror stories of dodgy stomachs during a run. So yes. Matt, you are absolutely right. It is definitely a lot about trial and error, the use of gels for longer distances. And um, yeah, it is, it just really is. So I, I know a lot of people watching will be also thinking the same thing. You kind of go through lots of different types and you'll eventually settle on one which is best for you and your stomach. And you will also, in using them in your longer training runs, you'll be able to find out when you need a gel and when's too late for a gel and when you need to kind of pre-gel, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So personally, I don't really like gels at all. <laughs> like they're not my thing. I don't really go fast enough to be thinking, oh, all I can get down me is a gel. Um, I've been known to eat quiches on long ultras and also, um, uh, veggie burgers as well, wrapped in tinfoil, bits of potato with salt on, lumps of cheese, medjool dates are really nice as well, peanuts, nuts and raisins, chocolate bars, flapjacks. I, I really like flapjacks is probably, flapjacks and jelly babies is probably my go-to fuel on ultra runs. And the advantage of that is that it's cheap as well. Like you don't actually need to pay for all of this really um, fancy sports nutrition if you're not going to be going so fast that all you can literally get down you is a gel or so long that all you can literally get down you is a gel um the other thing to be careful with with gels is make sure you drink plenty of water as well like keep hydrated um don't take a gel if you've got no water left um because they're basically just pure sugar <laughs> pure lots of different types of sugar but they're basically pure sugar um those sas isotonic gels will contain um that they should contain like this a similar amount of sugar to what your blood sugar is so they shouldn't be as bad as a pure like pure sugar gel um, but still you'd want to be hydrated and taking some water on board when you use them. So yes, you're right to not really take a gel from nine to 10 miles. Like if you're going 10 miles at like 10 minute miles, it takes you what, like an hour and 45 minutes. So you don't really need to start eating on that kind of run. I'd take one in my pack just as an emergency, but you're right. So when you start going beyond kind of like an hour and a half, two hours on your run, you wanna kind of take something. Like personally, I'd take jelly babies rather than a gel, because I don't really like gels. But if you wanna start with the gels and find one that's really nice for you, then um, I'd say maybe after an hour-ish, have a slurp of gel. And then after half an hour, have another slurp of gel. Um, then every half hour, just have another mouthful of something. Um, there is a certain amount of carb your body can take in per hour. And that is in um, the runner's cookbook, which I will advise to you now. So, oh, the runner's cookbook is by Anita Bean. Um, she's got loads of advice for what to eat and DIY stuff that you can make for yourself on things like ultras. Um, she also gives like um, references as to how much carbs your body can actually take in within um, certain time frames. So I would definitely furnish yourself with this book. It's got tons of advice about ultra running in it as well as all the other distances as well. So um, yes, there is a, a definite amount of carbs that you should eat and I'm just trying to find it um uh, yeah 30 grams of carbohydrate it's in here basically um fueling for 10k here we go fueling from an, for an ultra okay you can adapt your gut you see to take in more calories um but yeah this this page is what you need all about ultra running there um yeah uh, but yeah, I don't, if you want to use gels, great, but you can just use jelly babies. Just saying. <laughs> uh, let's see what everybody else um, does. Uh, okay. 
let's have a look. Oh, there's loads of comments on gels. Um, Kat says, nothing new on race day. That is very true. Um, she also says, it's all about what you personally can tolerate. Gels are convenient, but you will need some savory over 50K. Yes, I can't believe I forgot to mention that. Well, I did say cheese earlier, but yeah, peanut cheese, peanut butter sandwich, peanut butter and jam. Um, you might want some savory um, if you're going to go for 30 miles. You can kind of cope with gels and sweet stuff over 30 miles, but the moment you go any longer than that, you know, like if you're out all day, you kind of want a sandwich, don't you? Um, Hannah um, has recommended Hill Sound. Oh, that, that's um, for um, uh, winter running. Sorry, that's not um, a gel. <laughs> I was getting confused with Tailwind. Um, Je uh, Guy says he uses Velo Forte. They are, they're really nice gels, actually. Um, Kat is talking about real food here. So she's on about cheese and pickle wraps, crisps, malt loaf, um, and crush a bag of crisps um, and prick a corner of the bag with a pin to pack them small. Yeah, you can also put the crisps in your sandwich as well. That's a great way of getting crisps down as well. Um, Tim Brennan is very pleased that he's just made it. Hey, Tim. <laughs> nice to nice of you to join us. Um, Guy says tea with lots of sugar. Um, and Craig says uh, he knows people who takes gels take gels every thirty minutes, which he thinks is mental. Yeah, there is a certain amount of carbs that you're uh, that you can take in. I think it's, I think it's about, uh, I think it's thirty grams of carbs every half hour or some something like that. Um, but you can up it using a certain type of carbs. You can up it like double it if you eat a certain type. But I can't remember. I can't find it. It's in this book somewhere, and I just can't find it. So you're gonna have to buy the book. I'll put a link in the film description below. Um, yeah, no, I, I don't eat too, that much, to be honest, on one of these races. I just eat like loads before and then loads afterwards. Um, uh, Nigel says, uh, Nestle sweetened milk. I'd say sweetened milk, but perhaps not Nestle because they have a very bad rep um, ethically in the world. <laughs> um, uh, Rich Simpson um, says he has put gels into a squashy bottle. I know Guy does that as well. Um, and that means that you don't have any rubbish from the gels. Yeah, you've got to make sure that you pack all those gel wrappers away and they're really sticky and horrible. Um, I don't really use them at all, to be honest. Um, people keep sending me them to test as well. It's like, no, stop it. Um, so Rich is recommending Mountain Fuel. That's that They do this kind of jelly gel. Um, goo is also really nice as well. Like it's more, um, it's more like, like a kind of fudge stuff that comes out. That's quite nice as well. Um, uh, Craig suggests flapjacks. Yeah, I love a flapjack. You can make your own as well. Um, Catherine says 60 grams of carbs per half an hour. Yep. Yeah. So 30 grams, uh, 60 grams of carbs per hour. So yeah, 30 grams per half hour was what I said just now. Um, uh, lots of, lots of it. There's lots of information. There's lots of recommendations, but ultimately you have to work it out for yourself because everybody is different. Everybody digests things at a certain rate, different metabolisms. You'll be working at different paces as well. So it, it really is, it really is like, a, um, like a, it's a dark art really. <laughs> like you need to know the science of your own body. Uh, Paul likes malt loaf, that's great. Um, nothing new on race day, yeah, definitely. Um, this is a nice story from Alex here. He made the mistake of trying a sausage roll in a race. Turns out that a lump of protein halfway through a trail marathon is a guaranteed gut bomb. Some people swear by it. I know this guy, um, he was doing a double Bob Graham and he just does it on like Ginster's pasties and like, I don't know, probably beer or something to wash it down. <laughs> um, Rich wants us to send the gels my way. Do you know what? That is a really good idea. Next time I get a load of gels, I'll just get patrons to taste them <laughs> and test them. Um, Miguel, Miguel says, Huma gel and fruit leather. Mm, fruit leather, is that dried fruit? Um, I presume it is. Um, Nigel has just used, started using active root. That's very nice. Yes, actually, that's the one gel that I would actually use. Um, they do this gel mix and you make it in a soft flask. Um, and you mix it up with as much water as you want and then you just have it in this little soft flask and it's just great because you can take a mouthful and then turn the top back so that it doesn't all squish out. I just find that gels, I can't take a whole gel. So then it's just in my pack kind of blobbing out and then you have to wash the pack and it gets all sticky and ugh. yeah. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of gels. <laughs> so, so yeah, maybe not the right person to advise on them, but yeah, basically drink water, uh, 
take them relatively often but not too often um, and use lots of different things and take some savoury stuff as well. Yep. Brilliant. Okay, so we're on to the last question now. It's from Paul and Paul would like to know about running with poles. Here we go. So Paul says, I am soon to embark upon some ultra training. Woohoo. Good for good news for 2021, Paul. And I will be using poles for the first time. I could do with some help using them. Any tips? Yes, well, there is a whole how to use poles film on my YouTube channel that I have pre-arranged for you there, Paul. Filmed it a couple of years ago with you in mind. Knew that you'd asked me this question in two years' time. So I have put a link to that already in the film description below. So do check that out. I made it with Lucky Poles. Um, but I'm actually going to use a Harrier poll to demonstrate a few things to you here. <laughs> um, so I'll just move the question off so that we can see. Um, so uh, polls, uh, using polls. Okay, so uh, people give classes on polls, um, which always struck me as rather strange because I didn't think that using polls was like rocket science or anything. Um, basically, uh, you can get two types of polls. You can get, um, well, you can get more types than than this but the two main types for runners are poles which you can adjust or poles that you don't adjust so this one is an adjustable one so if you see there it adjusts like this so you've got various different heights there for all the way to 120 centimeters all the way down here to 105 and presumably this is 100 just here so so what you're looking for is for the height of the pole to mean that when you've got the part the the pole just in front of you like that you want um, a right angle so you want a right angle there when the pole is touching the ground so that's what you're looking for um, when the ground is uh, steeper like going up hills you might want to shorten the pole a little bit and then when you're going down hills you might want to lengthen the pole a bit but you might not that's the advantage of having an adjustable pole like this um, the disadvantage is it's slightly heavier than a pole which is just one length. So you can get a couple of types of pole which are just one length. They can either be um, folding poles which are one length, you know, like you know your length and you go for 120 centimetres perhaps. Or you can get ones which just stay out all the time, like they don't collapse at all. So they're the kind of thing that, you know, you'd use for like um, one of those vertical kilometre things. So, you know, you know you're going to be using them the whole time. You're going to be going for, I don't know, an hour or something to get up your VK and you know that you're going to be using them all the time. You just want them to be super lightweight and super strong. Um, the reason that you'd want them to fold usually is because you'll be on an ultra and you're not going to use them for the entire time. You might have a scrambling section that you might want to need to put them away for. You might not need them at a certain bit. You might want to fold them away to have a rest at a checkpoint, that kind of thing. So you might not need them the whole time. So that's why you'd want a folding pole. Um, using poles, um, basically, uh, watch the film, because it is interesting, because lecky poles have this like different, they have a different mechanism. They have like a glove thing. Usually with a pole, you put your hand up under like this, and then you grab like this. And that supports your hand in plonking the pole down. You also, probably want um a longer shaft here as well just because if you're using it to go across any like snow bits or like muddy steep bits you can hold it with both hands without getting a really freezing cold hand so that's just what that bit's there for you can adjust this um strap as well so if you want to be closer to the bowl or not the lucky poles have um sort of an attachment here and a glove thing which means that you're always attached to the pole and you can actually swing the pole um, from your hand without the pole dropping. I should just probably show you that shouldn't I? Just to actually actually show you. <laughs> so here we have the, this is the left hand one, let's go for the left. So this is the lucky pole and it's got this glove on it which comes off if you pull this thing. So let's put the hand in. There we go. Glove is in. Velcro drowned. Okay, we'll do it up. But can you see that it's it's stuck to the pole? So you can swing this pole out 
without even holding onto it so you don't get like a hand cramp uh, and then you can really easily get out of the pole like this so I don't know if you can see that but it clips in like that and then you have to push this to get out of the pole the only thing is if you fall over with the poles in your hand you have to try to get out of them <laughs> this doesn't just come out so that's just one thing to think about the other thing is you can take them off like that and you can leave them at an aid station and still have these on and then be like oh uh, I forgot my poles <laughs> or if you lose one of these you then can't really use the pole in the same way um, but yeah um, it's it's definitely an interesting design um, and uh, a lot of people really really like this kind of pole they're like really popular in Europe and uh, with amongst some of the elite trail runners as well so that is uh, the Lecky pole and the different hand thing there um, so yeah uh, poles basically you run with poles and you, you plant opposite pole to leg like this um, Guy is saying Harrier has a how-to as pole on poles as well. Um, I know because I edited that. <laughs> um, so, so yes, I go on the Harrier website, type in poles Harrier running or something like that, and that should come up. Um, yeah. So basically, you plant the pole um, opposite sides. So right pole goes down, left leg goes down. It's kind of like this you just you just kind of you just kind of go for it <laughs> and there's one thing you can do which is really cool with poles if you can see a boulder in front of you you can get both at the same time like on the boulder and like put the poles on the boulder and then jump up the pole jump up the boulder using both poles that's a really fun thing to do you can jump over puddles like that as well so you plant both poles down at the same time and then you sort of go wee through them so um that's the main reason for using poles i think on a run um but uh, yeah a lot of people will use poles um for ultra running um when they get, know they're going to do a lot of hiking so um they yeah you just I, like, people teach it but I just don't think it's rocket science in how to use poles you just plant them naturally as you go so you just um, as one foot down you plant one pole as one as the other foot goes down you plant the other pole you kind of go just as you would walk opposites <laughs> um, using the poles so um, so yeah watch the film um, and um, yeah and go for it, I would say. I, I think that people try to overcomplicate things sometimes. I think poles is something that everybody could naturally just use um, quite easily if they, if they just uh, have a go, basically. Um, let's see what everybody else says about poles. Uh, Primitive Stone Age says, poles are great, I swear by them. He uses Alp Kit. Yes, I have had a pair of Alp Kit poles. Um, they're very good. Uh, anybody else with poles info? Uh, Rich, uh, he prefers Harrier poles um, and he also keeps his hand out of the loops most of the time so he doesn't get injured um, where, if you fall. Yeah, you can do that, yeah, as well. I usually keep them in just because um, it kind of feels supportive to the hand when using the pole. Uh, Paul says, thank you, I'll be using your ultra training plan and starting on the 30th of December. Wish me luck. Good luck, Paul. You can do it. Yeah, and watch that film about the poles. Um, Rich says uh, he uses them like handrails while going up steep hills. Yeah, they're really good for that. They're also really good on river crossings as well. They can really steady you because you can't see the boulders under your feet. Um, Primitive Stone Age says he's going to run Cape Wrath Ultra. Wow, brilliant, in May. Um, he's used the poles for uphills only but not on the flats whilst running as it throws your gates, gate out yeah uh yeah i mainly use the poles for running um i have used them for i mean walking i have used them whilst running as well um they're quite fun to use like going downhill or on wide smooth flat things um because you can just sort of like power yourself along with them so like every bound of your leg gets amplified by a pole movement as well so there is that as well um guy says he likes to use them when he's tired um as stabilizers that is also true as well um it's also good to use poles if you've got a really heavy backpack on um but that's less likely when you're running i've used them for camping trips um really really useful um during camping trips okay so so yes sorry i'm i'm uh sorry about the uh 
just go with the flow with the polls advice but I just I just um I don't I don't see what there is to teach much about polls I've been using polls like my whole life no one ever taught me how to use polls you just kind of do this and you're using polls <laughs> but somebody else will listen to this and go oh my goodness Claire doesn't know what she's talking about so um yeah so go ahead use those polls Paul and report back to us and see how you're getting on um right that is the end of the questions everybody um and i would just like to say thank you very much for listening um to this whole live broadcast um and i would very much like to say a big thank you to all my patrons um patrons are people who support me just here at patreon.com slash wild ginger running they are um they are really generous, really loyal, um, and it's just so good of you to support me in such what has been a very strange year. Really, really, really appreciate it. Um, and let me know if you've got any more questions because I'm always happy to answer your queries. Like, just drop me a message, like in the Facebook group that we have, or just on Patreon itself. There's like a little messaging service as well. So just ask me any questions anytime, and I will answer you. Um, and I really hope that in 2021 we can actually do a proper meetup because it would be great to see those of you who I've already met again it would be really really wonderful to meet those of you that I haven't actually met yet so um so yeah that would be really really nice I hope that we are all able to meet up in 2021 so if you're not a patron do consider becoming a patron it's a great way to support the channel if you find my films useful um so uh just sign up patron.com uh slash wild ginger running you get loads of perks entry to the amazing competition for next year um and uh yeah it's still going on i've got people covering stuff throughout my maternity nothing's going to change apart from i just won't be there as often um and yeah i've got uh also a training camp coming up um in april that you can come on uh in the peak district so that would be really cool to see so lots of you there and i've got a book coming out oh i forgot the book oh i should probably mention the book otherwise they'll be annoyed at me <laughs> i mentioned the book that's coming out on the 7th of january now it was due to come out um at the same time as the baby <laughs> but it is coming out on the 7th of january now you can pre-order the book um i'll put a link in the youtube description below or just google claire maxted bloomsbury um and next week the live broadcast will be on wednesday as usual 6 30 p.m uk time and it will be the december competition live draw and it will feature john kiniston who is going to be taking over the competition draws for january february and march whilst i get to grips with a wailing baby so um i'm delighted to welcome him to the show next week and um i will now read out a load of happy christmases from everyone so let's this is so lovely thank you everybody um rich says he's a skier so he used poles all the time yes <laughs> they're very useful on skiing aren't they um and philip says thank you for another good year of really good reviews and having top guests thank you philip that is most kind of you um and if anybody like ever has any kind of recommendations if you're a patron um then just let me know because i've got a big list it's called list of films i want to make and that's basically everybody's suggestion so do let me know if there's any kind of reviews top like topics guests that you want on the channel because like i make this for you guys not me so like i'd love to know what you want so let me know i won't be able to do anything about it january for remark but beyond that yes i will be able to do some stuff Okay, John says, very useful Q&A. Happy holidays for you and your family. We are all wishing for a wonderful start to 2021. Yes, well said, John, definitely. 2021, hopefully, will be a much better year. Um, Tim Brennan says, here's to a better 2021. Happy holidays. Happy holidays to you too, Tim. Thank you very much. Uh, Paul says, thank you, Claire. Good luck in January. Merry Christmas. Good luck, Paul. Thank you for your amazing questions as well. And uh, well done on your run for the the One Run Global Day. It's really fantastic that you raised all that money for charity. So, so yes, uh, keep up the great work. Uh, Rich says, cheers, all the best for your new future. Uh, Monique says, Merry Christmas, everyone. Nigel Barnett says, best wishes for the future. Kat says, Merry Christmas. Um, Guy says, yay, we all love John. <laughs> and James says, thank you, have a good Christmas and New Year. Ah, oh, we have someone watching from Finland. Dean Patrick says, greetings from Finland. 
thanks for the poll review I ended up getting a pair of the Lecky Trail poles fantastic I'm really glad to know that the gear reviews help you out that is absolutely fantastic so thank you so much everybody for watching oh Seb says Merry Christmas as well better not leave him out uh, Merry Christmas to you as well Seb yeah thank you so much for watching thank you for being amazing patrons it's been wonderful spending this very strange year with you and here's to a much better year in 2021 so join me next Wednesday for the competition live draw um, and there'll continue to be films out every Monday every Wednesday um, for the foreseeable future so stick with the channel it gets better from here it's going to be an amazing 2021 thanks guys and i'll see you on the trails maybe sometime in the spring <laughs> bye